What's up guys, it's Michael Panetta with Tech Examined, and this is my late 2009 27-inch iMac, and it certainly served me well as a uh, editing machine for a while. I did upgrade to the 2013, which is what I use now for my main driver and editing. However, I do keep this around uh, for, you know, pretty much uh, everything else. So, I had an SSD installed in this a while ago, and it definitely brought new life to the computer. However, I'm having some issues with it, so today, we're going to replace it with this new Samsung 840 EVO 250 gig. Well, it's real simple to do, and I want to show you guys how to do that right now, so let's get started. So taking this glass panel off could not be any easier for this version of the iMac. It's actually held on by magnets, and that's just the glass that you're pulling up there that reveals the LCD display underneath, which has eight number 10 Torx screws, which we're going to remove now. All right, so once you have those screws removed, you have to carefully lift the panel up and disconnect four wires that are connected to the computer itself before you go ahead and pull this thing out. And you have to carefully do it because they all are plugged in their own ways, and the first one there in the top uh, right corner there is the first one you got to disconnect because it is the closest to the panel. And I worked my uh, way back there. So, again, there are four here, and you first one you have there is the LED backlit sink. The one down there on the right side is the LED backlight. That bigger cable that you did is the uh, display port, and that one little tiny wire is the temperature sensor. So once you have those pulled off, you can simply disconnect the display, revealing all the goodness that is inside this iMac. Now keep in mind, when I took these two pieces off, I do have some towels laid down and took an opportunity to clean both sides of the glass thoroughly as well as the LCD. Now as you can see here where my SSD is, this is where my super drive used to be. I had that replaced with this SSD and the gentleman that did it for me put in a nice little bracket and setup. So the only thing we really need to do is just remove some of the uh, heat flash tape as well as the tape holding the bottom corners in, and we can simply remove the SSD. Now during this whole process I thought maybe I should replace the one terabyte hard drive with like a two or three terabyte, but it was so simple to take apart, I'm glad I didn't wait because I can simply take this apart again and put the new hard drive in if I you know, feel like I'm going to need more room, or maybe make a fusion drive out of this. All right, so when you got the tape removed, I moved a little bit of the heat sensor there just to make sure I had enough room to pull this out, but simply lean it up just a little bit on an angle, and you can simply pull it out of the plug, and you're ready to replace it with the new SSD. All right, so here's the drive. It was a Crucial M4, which was a decent SSD. It served me well, and unfortunately, it was corrupt, so there's really nothing you can do but replace it. Now, keep in mind, I did have this professionally installed, so there is a nice bracket to be able to do this and easily change it out. And if this is something that you want to do yourself and you want to remove the super drive, you might want to think about getting one of these brackets to easily put that in there for the Mac. All right, and the last thing to do is to carefully take your display panel and drop it back down in. Now, what I did here was I worked from the bottom of the iMac to the top for obvious reasons that there's only so much length that these wires are, and you do have to plug them in a certain way. Now, that first one that I'm doing right there is a heat sink cable. Now, it's, there's many on there. This happens to be one of them for the display itself, and that actually just pushes in and snaps back into place. Now, this larger ribbon cable that I'm putting in, which is the display port, actually snaps in and has two teeth on the side that actually clamp into place. So you know once you do that, it'll actually give you a little bit of a click to put that in there. Now, as we clamp that in, I'm making sure that everything is connected because, God forbid, you turn this thing on after you've screwed everything back in and uh, it doesn't work, you got to take it all back apart again, which you don't want to do. Now the other cables on the right side snap into place and the ribbon cable at the top right corner actually slides in. So you got to be careful that you don't mess that up. All right, so once all the wires are connected, you drop the panel back into place and just going to go ahead and give it one more wipe down here. And then the next step is to put the eight screws back in. All 
All right, so the next thing we're going to do is take the glass panel and drop it back into place and line it up, and the magnets pretty much pull it in. Now, what I love about this version of the iMac is those magnets that allow you to simply take that off and clean it whenever you want. With the newer versions of the iMacs, they took the LCD panel and glued it to the glass because it was getting thinner and the, the clarity was getting better and better. So, unfortunately, it's not as simple as doing that anymore. All right, so we're just going to clean this up one more time, and I want to let you guys know that this SSD replacement did solve my problem with my computer turning off at any given time. I had a feeling that that corrupt SSD was doing something, even though... I wasn't running the uh, OS on it at all. Now, what I did was put a fresh, uh, clean install of Yosemite on here, and it is working out great so far. I'm even actually thinking about taking that SSD and doing a fusion drive, which you can do. If you guys are interested in uh, seeing anything about this, I figured you've seen a 1,000 Macs be turned on, so I was going to skip that. But if you want to see anything or you have any questions, be sure to hit me up down below. And real quick, I do want to thank Marco Hanna for hooking me up with this SSD. Uh, saved me some money, and of course, installing it myself saved me even more money and time. Other than that, please subscribe for the next video, and hit that thumbs up or thumbs down, and let me know in the comment section down below. I want to thank you guys for all the support. You guys take it easy, and I will see you in the next one.